Um, we are going to talk again about the Jerusalem cross as we continue our voyage through the various crosses during this Lenten season. So with that, I would ask that you didn't hear me last time, that's why no one stood up, but this time, please rise and let's sing, Rise, Shine, You People. Open my lips and my to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness.
Our first reading comes to us from Revelation, the 21st chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her, hus for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated at the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. And throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode among, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the, uh, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who would rise against me. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue our sermon series that we have been doing through all these Vespers services in Lent on these Wednesday nights as we've gathered in this sanctuary. Although the last couple, you probably have not been gathering in the sanctuary with me, but in your homes. Today in this series, we look at the Jerusalem cross. The Jerusalem cross is a cross with a, a strong center cross and then uh, smaller crosses in each quadrant. We've seen it on our banner as Pastor Vergi has been leading the liturgy in the red uh, banner in the lower right, and as he does the prayers, you can have a chance to look at it. And 
our cameraman's going to just go over to it right now as well. Now, in each of these sermons, we've been looking at the different crosses in this banner. This one, composed of five crosses, one central cross with four smaller crosses in each quadrant, has a historic, historical usage that only dates back about a, a little bit about a little over a thousand years from now. Its first finding is in the Jersey Island Church of St. Braylade. It has an altar slab on it. Uh, William of Normandy helped establish that church, and on that altar slab are uh, five crosses to represent the five wounds of Christ. That's somewhere around 1050, 1066 in that time period. 1094, Pope Urban II calls for a crusade to reclaim Jerusalem and the Holy Lands. And William of Normandy and uh, then other uh, leaders in Europe that are preparing to go on the crusade, they look for a banner that will carry them into battle. And they identify this Jerusalem cross kind of reminding them of that altar in St. Braillet on Jersey Island, one of those channel islands between England and France. And so they, they take this banner and they carry it with them into battle. Godfrey of Bouillon, the leader of the Crusades, the first Christian ruler of Jerusalem, is said to have this as his seal, although there's some disputed history about that. Interestingly, the country of Georgia, not Georgia like down at Atlanta, the ATL there, but Georgia in Europe, Asia, they have the Jerusalem cross on their flag. And they say it predates the 11th century because they want everybody to know they had it before Jerusalem had it, apparently. Well, so there's that origin story. But now let's look at, besides its origin and where it came from, what can it mean? I already mentioned to you about that church in Jersey Island that has the five crosses on it to represent the five wounds of Christ. That would be, you know, the, the wound in his side and then a wound in each hand and then the wound in his feet. I have always found uh, that meaningful to me as I look at the cross as a time to consider the, the wounds and the suffering of my Savior and then to see that those wounds are for all the nations. And, and so now we get to look at another way to think of the, the cross, of how we get to know about this gospel and how it's gone through all the nations. Uh, another way that this Jerusalem cross with its strong central cross with the four smaller crosses in each quadrant is that you've got the gospel of Jesus Christ that then goes to all the world with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But for me, what I have always found most helpful about the Jerusalem cross, it's not its crusade's origin or trying to learn about St. Braillet Church in uh, Jersey Island or Godfrey of Bouillon or, or how it might represent the four Gospels. I've always found great understanding with it with Acts chapter 1, verse 8. When Jesus commissions the disciples, he says, Go and be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Judea, Samaria, to the very ends of the earth. And, and so you start to see now this cross of Christ spreading through all the world. And the quadrants of, for these four smaller crosses is not to represent north, south, east, or west, but to represent Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. And there's a progression of how far our witness goes. It is fitting that we start our sense of progression and sharing of the good news of Jesus Christ at Jerusalem. Jerusalem brings our attention for me to this upcoming Sunday, Palm Sunday, when we will join our procession. Well, it's the procession we've been on since the beginning of Lent when we've reminded ourselves that with the ashes, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. We've been making a progression towards where our dustness finds an answer in God's love. And our, our procession, our progression towards the cross now is taking us on Palm Sunday to the gates of Jerusalem. When the crowds gather, they throw their cloaks on the road and their palm branches are put on the road. A palm branch, a great symbol of independence and welcome of this new king. And we are now, this Palm Sunday, going to join our, our procession 
with uh, the communion of saints in the past who have celebrated and, and sang right on, right on in majesty and Hosanna, Hosanna. We are going to have on our altar uh, for flowers, we're going to have palm branches. The little slivers of palms that we would normally pass out a couple weeks ago, we canceled the order on that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to share with everybody in the congregation a coloring page that you can then color in and uh, cut it out and have it look like palm branches. Or maybe you can just go take some cuttings from your yard if you've got something that's starting to get green already this spring. Or maybe your yard doesn't have anything green yet and you just go from an evergreen tree or something. And then we're going to take those colored pages... We're going to take those cuttings of green we have and we're going to put them on our front doors. And as we do that, we can tell our neighborhood, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So our, our start in this Jerusalem cross at Jerusalem reminds me of Palm Sunday. But Jerusalem has always held more than just the shouts of the crowds joyously welcoming Jesus. Jerusalem is where Herod's temple had become a place of empty sacrifices. It's a place where the, the shadowy corners of men make murderous deeds. It's the place where Jesus prepares both himself and his disciples for his death. And when he announces it at his supper, it's some, a place where Jesus gathers in prayer in the garden. It's the place where Jesus finds betrayal. Jerusalem is the city of God. But when our witness begins in Jerusalem, it doesn't just begin with the witness of telling everybody about the hosannas and the great shouts of joy that the king has come. When we start in Jerusalem, we're starting at the place also where Jesus found himself betrayed. We're starting in the place where Jesus found him under trial, mocked and defeated to all appearances. We would, we would like Jerusalem to be the Hosannas. We would like Jerusalem to be the parades of joy. But when I think of Jerusalem in this progression that's Acts 1.8, be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth, I don't just think of now Jerusalem as a historic ancient place where all this happened. I also think of Jerusalem as my home. That place where I know that there are shouts of joy at times, I think when I'm a witness in Jerusalem, I'm a witness in my home. I'm also a witness in a place where things aren't always right. Where betrayals and sufferings and sorrows can also be found. That's the struggles of beginning in Jerusalem. We begin in a place where there's a, a mixed bag of emotion. But we're going to witness in Jerusalem anyways. Because we're going to go with that procession of the loud hosannas of Palm Sunday. We're going to go to when Jesus institutes his supper. We're going to go in our procession through Jerusalem to Good Friday when he's under trial and then hung on that tree. But we're going to continue when we witness to what's happening in Jerusalem. And we're going to then go to Jesus being buried and brought into the silence of death. And on the third day rising from the dead. When you are a witness in Jerusalem, you are a witness in your home from the hosannas to the sorrows to the resurrection. And then when you take this witness to Judea, you're taking it to the countryside where people went out to meet John the Baptist to see what was going on. When you, when you take your witness to Judea, you're taking it to the neighborhood around you. And your neighborhood could be people that have curiosity Kind of like how the people had curiosity when they went to John the Baptist. When you take it to Judea, you're taking it to the people that followed Jesus to see what miracle he would do next, but then struggled to follow him when the crowds were shouting, crucify him, crucify him. When you take your witness to Judea, you're taking it to your neighborhood where there's curiosity, when there's sometimes great parades and acclaim, but at other times there's this wonder is anyone here? So we take our witness from Jerusalem, Judea, to Samaria. Samaria is a notorious place in the Bible of being broken and divided from God. That's what the people of Jesus' time thought of Samaria, at least. Samaritans were those that were to be walked past and forgotten. 
But Jesus reminded us in the parable of the Good Samaritan that a Samaritan can know how to be a neighbor. And so we will be a witness in Samaria. When I witness in Samaria, I'm doing so with the confidence that the good news of Jesus Christ can penetrate the hardened hearts of those that would seek to be my enemy and bring persecution upon me. When I bring my witness to Samaria, I'm bringing my witness to the people around me that if it was up to me, I would think are forgotten and should not be remembered or named anymore. But when I bring my witness to Samaria, they're no longer just forgotten. They're now people that I know God has remembered. When I bring my witness to Samaria, I'm bringing it to that spot that I feel I'm divided from by my own heart, but I'm drawn to by the love of Jesus. We continue now our procession around the Jerusalem cross, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the very ends of the earth. When I am a witness to the end of the earth, how far do I go? How long do I trust that God is giving me to share his good news? He's given me this moment now to go to the ends of the earth. He has given me this moment now to be a part of his mission work, sharing the promise that faith comes by hearing. And he has brought my words into this world so that others may hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are those who do not know how to live in peace. They still live in the conflict of Jerusalem that shadowed and surrounded Jesus at the cross. There are those who do not know how to live in peace in Judea when there's just curiosity and wonder, but rarely something that goes deep and strong and solid. There are those who struggle to live in peace in Samaria as we find ourselves to be enemies of one another, broken and divided. There are those who struggle to live in peace as the stretch goes to the ends of the earth and they wonder, can it go that far? But to anyone that is struggling to live in peace, whether it's in your home, it's in your neighborhood, it's to those that you have conflict with, or to those that are far off and that just remain a stereotype of prejudice to you, I want you to trust that the cross makes a difference in Jerusalem. The cross makes a difference in Judea. The cross makes a difference in Samaria. The cross makes a difference even today when you feel like you're at the end of the earth and being forgotten by everyone. When we, in the cross of Christ, find glory, we find it in every quadrant of life. We find it today, and we find it for tomorrow. May this be the trust and the confidence you have. We will continue this series of In the Cross of Christ Our Glory by placing the last cross on the banner on Easter. It will be a Celtic cross reminding us of the everlasting, eternal victory that Christ has won for us. Thank you for joining us today in worship. We're going to continue our service now with a time of gathering the offering. There's going to be a screen on there that's going to describe how you can support the ministry of our shepherd. Most importantly, pray. Pray for the wisdom of God to use your gifts in Jerusalem, in your home, in Judea, your neighborhood, in Samaria, among your enemies, and even to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, everlasting Father, you raised up the right people at the right time to minister your people. Please bless all those who are providing treatment and care for the sick, and those who are researching ways to reduce the illness, slow the spread, and provide a vaccine for the coronavirus. Bless and prosper their work and keep them safe and well. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Heavenly Father, you saw Israel in their despair and raised them up to hope by placing your spirit upon them. Join us together with the communion of saints in Christ. Even though we must for a time stand apart, raise us up from our weariness and grant us your spirit that we may be strong in faith, bold in witness, holy in life, and steadfast in hope. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God of power and might, you hold in your hand all the might of man. Give to us good government and faithful leaders who will heed your word and pursue righteousness and justice. Bless and defend us against all destruction, especially from this deadly pandemic, and keep us to be patient and faithful citizens of this land using ourselves and our resources wisely for the good of all. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O merciful Lord, your Son shed tears for Lazarus, whom he loved. Grant your compassion and patience and endurance to all who suffer illness, who are troubled in mind or whose time on earth is short. Spare us from death now but give us courage and comfort far stronger by your power over death. Give comfort to the grieving and peace to the dying, and give the same comfort and peace to us who live in the shadow and fear of death. Hear all our prayers, especially on behalf of Dennis and Carl Reading and their family, as they mourn the loss of wife and mother, Laura. We also pray for Bev Held, and for Lori Zimmerman's mother, Mary Ann, and for Dan Mellick, who are all hospitalized. For all who are ill or have been exposed to the coronavirus, and for all those that we now name in our hearts. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O oh blessed Lord, your word continues to go forth and bear good fruit. Bless the missionaries planting churches near and far. Bless those churches with whom we partner in the worldwide work of the gospel. And bless the, the congregation now struggling to fulfill your bidding and do what you have called them to do in your name. Sustain us in hope that we may endure the tests, trials, and troubles of this life. And be ready when our Savior comes again in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by your great goodness, merciful look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. O God, from whom came all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the Holy Communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.